Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of our Pride Perspectives, a conversation with the community. This is our third edition of a five-part mini-series that we're doing this week uh, in honor of all of our accepted students. So we are delighted to have you joining us tonight. We are uh, honored that you went through this process with us. And we once again congratulate you for um, being accepted into the Pride. And we hope that all of you on this call and anyone joining us uh, in the coming weeks uh, who are watching this, that we will see you here on campus in September and uh, wearing the blue and gold and having a fantastic start to a in-person uh, education at Trinity Pauling. So, uh, my name is JP Burlington, Director of Admission, Class of 1995. And tonight we are going to talk about our Center for Learning Achievement and the overarching value of that program and what it does for uh, the boys that are here, uh, what it's done for uh, boys uh, from the past, uh, including me. So we have had, uh, tonight is, is the CLA, as I mentioned, Monday night was uh, active learning, and we'll probably dive into that a little bit tonight as well. Last night, uh, we had a great talk about the benefits of arts and athletics uh, here at Trinity Pauling. And again, those are all available uh, to, to watch uh, if you're not Zoomed out yet, um, which I know we all are. Uh, and, and tomorrow night, we have a great one on, on our practicum, as well as our college counseling, and which again, we'll probably hit a little bit of that tonight. And then Friday night to, to finish it off, it'll be about the, the vibrancy of our student life and uh, all the activities that we, we do on campus um, when their boys are, are not home. So without further ado, I want the, the panelists uh, to introduce themselves and then we'll get into our uh, conversation. And that's what this is gonna be, a, a conversation uh, between the, this, this panel but we want you involved as much as a webinar can let you be involved. Uh, there is a Q&A button uh, at the bottom of your screen. So do not hesitate to throw in there a question. And if any of our panelists, uh, faculty, if you're feeling like you can multitask and you wanna take one of those questions, do not hesitate. Um, but if not, we'll, we'll, we'll answer it in live uh, session as we go. We also had some questions come in when you registered. So we'll get to all of those, uh, but we want this to be much as much of a conversation as possible. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Gilman. Thank you, JP, and, and good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Gilman. I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher here. I've been here finishing up my 10th year uh, working. I graduated in 2005, so I'm, I'm an alum of the school. Like Mr. Burlington, I, I went here for six years, so I started out in the middle school and then uh, did the, the did the full run um, and uh, excited to be back here working. I coach varsity hockey or assistant varsity hockey coach and lacrosse coach. I work in the star dorm where uh, I get to work with Harry a little bit more. Um, and then I, I'm the dean of the senior class. And uh, I like I said, I teach in the CLA, but more specifically the lead program. Uh, I teach the courses composition one and three sections of analytical writing. Great. Uh, Mrs. Kellogg. Thank you. Sorry, JP took me a minute. Thank you, guys. Um, so my name is Rachel Kellogg. I have been here for 26 years, taught here for 10. Um, I have three children, two of which that have already gone through the school and one that is currently here. Um, I teach, uh, oh, I'll back up, sorry. Um, I coach varsity basketball and lower soccer. And I teach in the lead program, I teach executive skills and reading comprehension. Wonderful. All right, uh, Mr. Williams. I'm Jackson Williams. I'm the class of 25 and this is, I'm a first year. Okay, and, and Jackson, where are, you, where are you coming from? Um, I live in New York City, so I'm not that far from Trinity Pauling. And what um, you started in this year is your first year as an eighth grader, correct? Yeah, yeah first year. First year, perfect. Um, Mr. Clark. Hello, my name is Harry Clark. 
I'm a sophomore here at Trinity Pauling. This is my second year. I live in Star Dormitory with the great dorm parent himself, Mr. Gilman. And I um, am from Newark, New Jersey, so I'm not that far either. Great. And uh, without further ado, the uh, the leader of this 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 panel tonight, um, and also the coordinator and director of the Center for Learning Achievement, um, Roberta is going to tell you a little bit about herself. But she's also going to dive right into this program. Um, you're going to see uh, how much it means to her. Um, she's passionate about it for many reasons, and um, she's going to share a little bit about the history of the program. Um, as well as, as how it's kind of living up to the standard she expects um, today. So, Mrs. Lito. Thank you, JP, and welcome everyone. I'm really excited about the next year of uh, Students at Trinity Pauling. Uh, I'm the director for the Center of Learning Achievement, and uh, this is my 19th year, which is hard to believe, at Trinity Pauling, um, my sixth year as the director. Uh, the students at Trinity Pauling is my passion project. I came into education because my son was dyslexic. He is a graduate of Trinity Pauling and now it's hard to believe he just turned 30. So blowing my mind, but uh, uh, what we do here is amazing. It's amazing. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. And I am blessed with the amazing team that I get to work with that um, in the Center for Learning Achievement. Uh, I've had the opportunity to watch the evolution of it um, coming from various names. JP, I think it was a different name when, when you were participating in it. Uh, I think I've gone through three or four titles of our lead program at least. But it started um, some time ago in the 70s was the, the original um, simplified version of it, but based on research and um, it's a modified Morton-Gillingham uh, uh, program and it slowly has evolved and expanded and we realized that a lot of the techniques that we use we are just good teaching practices and um, the CLA has now expanded to also have executive skills because we knew that we needed a, a component there to serve to to service or support kids that just needed that extra attention with uh, um, with the organization planning prioritizing, initiating, things like that. Um, and the best thing about this is that we, I have be my amazing staff and team, I like to call them team, my amazing team continues to help us grow. And we have expanded now to kind of support the entire school and not just the students, but the faculty. Um, they're becoming experts. They are experts. They're becoming um, proficient in, in, in the newest practices of how we support learning, how we um, help the help students reach their potential. We expanded a couple of years ago. I, I'm starting to lose track, but probably about two or three years ago, three years ago, uh, we started the, uh, the Allen Reading and Writing Lab, which was a place for all of our students to um, come in, get support, um, writing help, um, homework help, uh, just a wonderful place to collaborate. And um, that's the beauty of the Center for Learning Achievement is we're constantly refreshing. We are looking for ways to do it better. And we're looking for ways to connect with the students and to help them, um, whether it's uh, writing a paper or whether it's just navigating their course load. Um, and I'm excited because now I've dragged in college counseling willingly, and they're going to participate in the Allen Reading Writing Lab a little more now. And so you're going to see this really active space that has um, another layer of support for our students when they're, they're writing um, for their college essay, or they're just kind of trying to kind of have a, a brainstorming session on what their interest is and where they want to attend school. So you'll see a piece of that in the Allen Reading Writing Lab. Um, uh, I'm amazed every day by the great work that our faculty does for these kids, uh, these boys. And, and by far my team and two of my, my star players here on the panel um, reach out and support kids 
across campus. And I think I think that's one of the biggest, you know, for me uh, as a, I mean, if it had been today, I'd be in the, I would have been in the lead program. Um, it was, as we all said, it was it was a different name back then. But I think the evolution of this program is that students of all abilities, all different learning styles, um, can utilize the services in the Center for Learning Achievement. And Mrs. Kellogg, if if you could, you know, we talked about this a little bit. Um, this morning, just about the students that outside of, and we're, we're going to dive into a little bit of the executive skills program and the lead program in, in a bit, but talk about some of the kids that you've seen in the halls come in and, and need assistance. Right. Um, absolutely. So, you know, I, I see at least, especially in our hallway here, we talk about, you know, the, the different wings and where we teach in our program, we're kind of a little bit together down here, which is wonderful to support each other. But we find kids, you know, trickle in and out of our classrooms, you know, between classes, looking for help, right? Whether it's navigating, they're, they're struggling with some of their AP classes, and they're struggling with how to organize what's ha happening or navigating how to approach a teacher, and I had a, a kid who was taking multiple AP classes come into my room one day, kind of melting a little bit. It was the end of the marking period, just trying to figure out how he was gonna approach a teacher about something. And, and so we really talked, talked through that and it didn't take him long, but you know, I, I think the empathy that we have here for our students realizing that it's that time of year or, or there's something going on in their lives that they can come to us and come to any teacher further for that matter, but, but come and say, you know, I'm really having a hard time navigating. And I, I never, you know, some of these kids I've never taught before. So it's, it's great to realize that for them, that they know that they have people here that they can come to. Yeah. And Harry, I saw you, you, you were shaking your head at, at just talk a little bit about your experience, you're, you're almost through year two. And obviously, um, for your the two years you've been here, they've been different. You've had 75% normal. Um, and now you're almost full year of uh, COVID. Um, so just talk about the sort of first part of your first year, and then a little bit of now and, and how the teachers have supported you um, through your 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 wins and you know and some of your losses not that you've had many losses but so when i first came uh i took my first year i took a program called executive skills which we'll probably definitely dive into more um but when i first came i was i was confused i was i didn't really know what the class was going to be about i uh i i i was just like i've never taken anything like this before and this was during the, the normal time. So I, I took this class and it was from day one throughout the whole year, it was, it was really uh, successful and important to me personally, because um, one, it was a safe space for me to just let my teacher know what was going on about anything. And two, the strategies that I would create with my teacher um, really benefited me through throughout my first year and still now, because I don't take an executive skills class right now, but they, the, the point of it is for it to continuously help you. So I, uh, there's something that maybe we'll bring up and Mrs. Kellogg can help and probably we'll bring up too called the planner. Um, it's, she's gonna show it right now. <laughs> it is a very important tool and just one small example that has a huge effect on uh, a lot of people that use it. Um, so what it is, is you organize all of your classes, you can write everything down. And it's something that is really important because now we're in the age of everything being online. And sometimes, no, not to bash teachers or anything, but the, the, the work may not get up there or something will happen. So it's important that you have it written down and it also just makes you feel more organized. And that's just one example. And yeah. Great. And, and Jackson, I know um, this is the first year here, as we've talked about, um, and I know you came from um, a pretty uh, 
strong independent day school in the city and talk about the transition from um, the, ex the great experience that you had for many years in, in the city to this, again, almost finishing out your first year here. And um, some of the, maybe just talk about some of those uh, tools. We, we, Mrs. Liedel and I always talk about tools that kids are, have in their toolbox and what these programs do and the support the teachers have just sharpens those tools a little bit. So just talk a little bit about your experience thus far. Well, it's been very helpful because when I first went into the LEAD program, like I didn't know what to expect at first. And when through the first couple of weeks, I thought it was easy. But then as I got into it, I realized how it translated and helped with my other classes, especially the planner, as Harry said, because like in my other school, we had a planner. I just didn't use it. And so planning out what I actually had to do um, made it, I guess, made it easier for me to understand of how to prioritize my time. Absolutely. And, and I think that, I mean, just it's, it's that experience, I think, Mr. Gilman, that we hear a lot of not only eighth graders, but ninth graders, but even juniors that come in. Um, maybe even some of your, you know, hockey lacrosse players say, God, I wish I had known X, Y, and Z two years ago. It would have helped me in my high school experience or even, God, I wish I had found Trinity Pauling two years ago. So talk about that um, almost like the epiphany for, you know, let's just say a repeat junior that says, oh my God, this is, this is what it's supposed to be like. Sure. And I, and I, and I just, before I dive into that, I, just two things that came to mind that um, it, teenagers, teenage boys, repetition and, and the how, right. So, and that kind of seg segues me into a little bit what, what, what I want to talk about, but they need to know why they're doing something. They, the constant reminder, and obviously the constant, the constant task of doing it um, is super important for them. And, and I think that, that ties into the epiphany piece because I think I can't tell you also the countless kids that come in here, maybe Mrs. Kellogg can probably even, and Mrs. Lito, but that wish they were in the program or they had the opportunity, you know, so not only the kids that are in, in the program and, and realize it or in the program as, you know, three years too late. Um, but the students that kind of are like, I, I wish I had this opportunity to be in there because they see what goes on in the classrooms. They see maybe from their teammates or roommates or for buddies, you know, um, the support and the help that that they're getting and the and the chance to do well in all classes. But the epiphany moment, I think, again, it, it, it's super important. And I, I obviously we all love catching it earlier rather than later. Um, but it, especially for my juniors in the analytical writing piece, when they sit down to write their college essay, um, and and some of you on this call may you know as a junior, you're going to start that process right away, whether you're in the program or not. But having the tools like Jackson was talking about and Harry having those tools to, to help hone in on the areas that they need to concentrate on is super important for them to develop. And they'll start to get that and it starts to trickle out to all their classes. Um, so, you know, I, again, I talk about the writing piece cause you know, I have the three sections on writing, but whether it's in history class or you're writing a lab report for science or you're in economics, putting together a presentation, those all the components that go into constructing a good essay for me right can also be pushed into constructing a, a very good lab report for chemistry so th those moments happen um, and they continuously see i think more so when they they realize how applicable it is to the whole curriculum and not just okay i'm asking you as an analytical writing teacher of course you're going to write um, but when they see that they can pull out and I love it and it doesn't it, it happens I wish it happened more but when they pull out their outline that I give them for writing you know an essay on on a short story that we're reading but they're they're using the same outline to write you know an essay on World War II um, and follow that pattern of paragraph to paragraph and I think they they start to see the actual benefit of you know the why and and the how of, of what we're doing. Yeah, and I think, you know, Roberta, for, for some of the folks that are on this call, um, 
a lot of the terminology we're talking about, they're, they're going to recognize. So there are, there, there are boys here that have been accepted into the LEAD program. There are boys here on this call that have been accepted into the executive skills program. But for those who haven't and who might be thinking, oh, wow, this is kind of like Mr. Gilman said, I, I'm not in those programs because of, you know, as we can get into that at another time, but it's how, how do I get to utilize you mentioned it earlier, but how do I get to utilize these services when I'm not technically in the lead program or I'm not technically, you know, what do our, what outside of your team, mm -hmm. you talked about them, what do our, what are our teachers? And, and I know that um, a big task for you coming up in the coming year is to really um, work a, as a whole. Um, so talk about extra help and talk about um, that opportunity and how that extra help is, is differentiated instruction. And so to talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. Um, the beautiful um, design of the way that academics um, is performed at Trinity Pauling, I, I think of it almost like an onion. Um, so we start from every student has their advisor and a lot of people on this call have already heard kind of the advisor advisory relationship. That's a really important relationship. Uh, then you have uh, your classroom teachers and the way that they um, utilize extra help. So this has been a really interesting year with the pandemic. And we were really quick to notice that sometimes students are not, especially with our students that were on campus, that extra help didn't work well through Zoom. So we were really quick to collaborate and, and kind of come up with scenarios where we could do in person, six feet apart, extra help and things like that. So the dynamic piece is it starts in the classroom by the specific class because they're the expert in that field. Then uh, my team also can support those teachers, right? They're the experts in the, with the toolbox, with coming up with the strategies, with understanding the profiles. Um, sometimes there's students that come in that, uh, that, that aren't even aware that they're struggling in some, some area. They have no, no learning difference. They have no attention difference, but they just didn't master a component. They have a gap in their learning here and they just need some, you know, for lack of a better term, spit and polish, right? A little time with some people to do that. So we start with the teacher. If the teacher is, is, feels like they're not getting any cadence, they will reach out to my, our, my team, right? to Chris and Rachel and some others and see if there's some strategy, they'll come to me um, and, and see if there's some way that we can approach that. We also, I collaborate and um, actually most of my team collaborates with our um, Dean of Counseling, our Dean of Residential Life, our Dean of Students. So, because we know that learning happens all over. So it's not just academic, it's where can we support them? Because we know that if they're having a problem on the athletic field, it's gonna show up in their academics, whether it's not getting their work done or something like that. But uh, then they also have the Allen Reading and Writing Lab, which is, is in the academic building and it's a wonderful hub. Um, the goal for every single student is independence. That's what we're working towards. We just want them to um, reach their potential, understand how to attack um, a situation, and come up with the best scenario. Like Rachel said before, teaching them how to sometimes just approach a teacher that they feel is unapproachable, they're gonna run across that. We don't have a lot of teachers that are like that, but it might be just the perception of the student. And so we kind of coach them along and, and that's not just for our signature program kids, it's for everyone. And we have an open door policy and you will see People, you know, we'll see young boys, students coming in all the time, just kind of checking in or I need a pencil, Mrs. Liedel. I, you know, I don't have anything to write with today, you know, off my game or it's really amazing. I have a job. Yeah, collaborative. Go ahead, Henry. Can I have a Jolly Rancher? Yes. Can I, <laughs> yes. They come in, you know, we do bribe them a little bit now. <laughs> well, so, we entice them in and then we can't get rid of them now. <laughs> that's right. So Jackson, again, you know, knowing that you're, um, if, if we had had these webinars last year at this point, you, you may have been on them. Um, you were um, 
had been just been accepted. And so can you, in terms of the extra help and, and the, again, for, for all students, what was your biggest differences um, between where you were last year and this year? And the boarding experience is obviously a, a major fact of that with your, your teachers um, almost at your beck and call when you, when you need them. But just talk about that transition for you. I would definitely say it would, de it would be paying attention in class and responsibility. Um, responsibility would be a big part of it because I wasn't living on campus. I'm at other school because I was a day student, because I was a day school. So it was kind of like I could push this off to the side and the teachers won't be there. But now like a teacher could show up at my door and like I can't really run away from it. Yeah. And another part of it is I don't have anyone to blame but myself. So it's kind of like someone's someone's giving you opportunity and you don't want to lose the opportunity so you're just gonna do what you have to do to keep it because especially with extra help teachers are always there like you can never say like oh but you weren't there because they're always at the library especially with a lot of my classes because i'm in the lead program yeah and and harry i know um there's been a progression for you as well and you know what would you say now from freshman year to sophomore year, um, what was your biggest leap in you know the the strengths that you have now academically? Well, I'd say for me, like to go off of what Mr. Gilman said before, I was gonna say I was gonna build off of what he said. Going from middle school, which are some of the darkest years of my life, it was not good. Going into freshman year, you know, uh, freshman year one being the best school years of my entire life. I needed, I needed a routine and I needed repetition. And when you come here, like you may, you may start to think like, well, routine repetition, doing the same thing every day. There's no, there's no uniqueness to that. What's I, that's what I first thought myself. Cause I was told that's what my, my mom and my teachers were talking about is repetition and routine. And when I came here and I got that, it led to many good things because I just, I, ha I knew what I needed to do every day and I could plan using the planner, Miss Kellogg. I can, I can do that every day and that would lead to success. So I would say repetition and uh, if I, if I have repetition, and I have things planned. I don't have to be so hard on myself or lenient on other things. That's great. And, and I think one of the other things I want to kind of transition to, because we do have, um, well, obviously Jackson came in as an eighth grader in the lead program, Harry ninth grade executive skills. We have kids coming in 10th grade into the lead program, but uh, maybe Mr. Gilman talk a little bit about, it, it doesn't matter what entry point, um, whether you're in one of those programs or not. Um, you know, there's when we have new students coming in from the age of 12 to 18, um, how is the support set up um, and in, in a way that it works for each of them, you know, in September? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it works the same because we start we start at the ground level um, and, and we start we start with the foundation. And obviously, cliche as it sounds right, that's the most important piece for any for anything. Right. The, obviously, the, the foundation of a house or whatever the skills for if you're if you're an athlete. Right. The, the foundation, um, you know, and I, and I think I think Jackson and Harry mentioned earlier, too, a little bit that at, at first that the foundation piece because there are varying levels that some people might, some students might find it a little bit easier at times than the other. Um, but, but I always like to say it's going to balance out um, at some point, whether it's in September or October, things start to level out for, for the class. And um, I think that's, that's an important piece. Again, whether you're a 14 year old or you're that 19 year old PG that is taking the second year lead or taking executive skills, there's, 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 you know, starting at that level and then building the skills necessary. So, you know, Harry's talking habits and it, you are starting repetition, but you're building the habits and you're building the skills to be a successful student and be a successful person as a whole here. Um, and, and that I, Roberta mentioned that earlier, right? It, it, it starts to trickle out everywhere. So it's not just in the classroom or in, you know, the lead program or in executive skills. It's, it, it starts to show in all areas and, and, things start to boil over. So having the, 
having a good foundation and the good base of skills and, and start to develop um, gradually up is, is, is important. And we see obviously the benefit, whether again, you're that 14 year old um, or you're that, that 19 year old that, that needs the extra piece before they go off to college. Um, and I, there's some students I, you know, I was speaking with a family yesterday and, you know, you can come in and take and take, be a lead part of the lead program as an eighth and ninth grader or ninth and 10th grader, but um, you may need a little extra piece um, before, you know, parents feel comfortable before sending them off to college. Um, and maybe they revisit an executive skills course, you know, as a senior, um, you know, at, after they've been actually a graduate of our lead program. So um, they just, you know, sometimes mom and dad need that little extra uh, confirmation that, that, you know, Harry or Jackson are ready to go off to, to college. So. And I think Roberta, that's a lot about, or, or Rachel, just flexibility in our schedule and in the opportunity to, for kids to continue that path and, and growth. Um, and I know in Rachel, you've had two boys go through ones right in the middle of it all. Um, how do you, with an academic schedule and, and, and the opportunity, what is, what, what do you feel like the benefit is for, uh, we, we weren't, I wasn't really going to dive into the all boys piece of this, but I think that has something to do with kids going to extra help and kids coming to sit with teachers in their classrooms on a daily basis. There, there is something to that. So could you talk a little bit about that? I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to first transition with Chris's and just saying too that it, and it transitions to what you're asking too, that we meet kids where they are, right? It, it, it's not a cookie cutter, nothing in the program, nothing in what we do here is completely cookie cutter. And so, you know, what I teach in my class with the executive skills is really based upon what the individual boy needs. And because we're trying to, in that, that, meeting the students where they are. We're collaborating with them because we're trying to help them gain confidence. And I think that's where the all boys mm -hmm. comes into play. Um, I, I've seen it with my own three children where, I, I don't want to say they're shyer, but shyer academically in the academic aspect where they, they're not going to take those, those risks that some boys take, you know, where this gives them that opportunity to sit there and say, okay, I'll raise my hand because it's just my friends around me that are, you know, if they giggle at me, it's, it's my friends. It's not a girl. Um, it, it, I feel like it gives them that springboard to then take it to the next level. Yeah. And Roberta, have you seen, um, again, it's, it's, I, I think you said 19 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we've really have, um, I think the biggest change in the, support here for all students has really happened in the last three years. Um, there's been, there's always been, I mean, I remember there's always been extra help. There's always been great teachers and, and, and they, and we utilize them on a daily basis, but there's, there's something I think different now. Um, and I'm not sure if that's part of the, the, the practicum. I'm not sure if that's part of the enhanced center for learning achievement. Um, what, what is it that well, again, I mean, you said it, we do things better every year, but what mm -hmm. is it about what we're doing that's maybe unique to Trinity Pauling um, that, you know, I think about the lack of tutors. We don't need tutors, you know, we're, because we have them, they're, they're here 24 seven, they live on campus. Well, uh, that's a two part. So specifically, if you're talking about like the lead program, the lead program is very different from any other support program that I've seen in, um, uh, you know, nationally. And that's because we have a curriculum. So especially for high school students, we have a remedial component and then we go beyond and when we get into executive skills. And I always tell people, you know, I wish the entire school could take executive skills because it's that robust and it's that intentional in building writing skills. And it, it really is kind of uh, leaning into a college level writing course. And, um, you know, I have never seen anyone that has the curriculum that's very intentional, that is research-based, um, very systematic and sequential, like we do with this component. 
That being said, we also are willing to shift. So when we talk about executive skills, uh, JP, you and I have talked about, you know, I write a curriculum, we come up with ideas, Rachel and I brainstorm stuff, and, and then we get a new, um, a new student that has a little bit different needs in that, and we throw that out and we start with something new and we kind of have to readjust and we collaborate in that. And I think that's the piece why not just only our signature programs, but our support um, campus-wide has changed is because we have a presence here that's so empathetic but we are going to hold that bar up like uh, uh 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 we're not you know we know like chris said you know repetition works and models work and we've got to show them you know it's the you know i do we do you do kind of model that i remember many many years ago being taught when i was going for my masters you know that is really the model for everything everything at campus because we know that boys learn by doing. We know that, um, that, that we're asking them to be vulnerable, which is an uncomfortable word for, I know for my generation it was a real uncomfortable word, but we know that that's where growth happens. So I think that, and, and also it's this amazing team that, um, that I get to work with, not only my, my department, but the faculty as a whole, um, they care. They care about boys' education. They care about the impact they have. Well, and I think you, you mentioned something about um, boys learn best by doing. And, you know, Jackson and Harry, if you could talk about, you know, Monday night, we talked about active learning at Trinity Falling. And, um, you know, we talk about hands-on learning. And, you know, talk about one of your classes that you've experienced, um, Harry, maybe the, the last two years, or Jackson, even just maybe uh, the science class you're in or any of the classes, just talk about that learning by doing. Um, one of the, we, we talk about learning happens everywhere on our campus. So if you could maybe dive into that, Harry Jackson, um, about that, the way that you learn and everybody learns differently, how much better it is when you're doing it actively and you're using your hands and you're, and, and so if you can talk a little bit about that. Well, there's always something different in every class. Um, so for example, for every single classroom, the way they're set up, they're in a horseshoe type shape. So everyone's faced inward, looking at each other and engaged. And there's also little rolly chairs in most classrooms that you can move on when you're getting a little fidgety or whatever. I can't really think of any other word. But um, I think an example of a class specifically that I can definitely think of is Mr. Kellogg's physics class in ninth grade. Um, and for that matter, every class, as I said before, has their own different, every teacher has their different way of teaching, but they're all active based. So for example, we would do a lot of experiments in Mr. Kellogg's class. Um, a, lot, a lot, all the teachers are really uh, open, for example, I like to stand up in class. It, it helps me. And so uh, a lot of teachers, actually all the teachers will let me do that. Um, so they listen to you and they know that everyone learns differently. So they let you do not whatever you want, but in that sense, whatever you feel is best for you within the standards of the teacher. So, yeah, perfect. And Jackson, you know, again, first year here, um, do you see, uh, I mean, you were in an all boys school before as well. So boys learn best by doing. I mean, I know that's a big piece of, of all boys education everywhere, but have you seen a difference here um, with that? Yeah, because um, like in Mr. Klohar's class in our history class, he let, we talk as a class, like we just not listening to a teacher talk at us because after a while, like we zone out, especially me. So Mr. Kolhar, he'll talk to each of us and like we'll talk as a class, like we won't just be sitting, taking notes the whole time, especially at the beginning of class, like we'll talk about what's going on in the news of that day or any, or something like that. So I would definitely say yeah. that engaging with each other is very helpful. Yeah, and that goes back to the style of our classrooms and, and, the, and the collaboration uh, of it's not just, and we, we talk about this all the time um, when we're touring families, no one, boys or girls, 
uh, like being talked at for 45 minutes. Um, but when, when students can be in a collaborative environment, uh, the learning happens in, in a different way. And uh, again, two nights ago, we were talking about active learning and how teachers utilize this campus, uh, this 240 acre campus um, to the best of their ability. And you know, history teachers and English teachers getting out of the classroom and utilizing this space. And that's, that's how our young men and who become men are successful. And I think, um, you know, Mr. Gilman, if you could think of uh, and this is, again, I'm, I'm coming at you from left field here, but you can think of someone who you've taught um, over a span of time. And, you know, in two years, you could have, this could be your Harry Clark story. Um, but, you know, talk about maybe just a, anecdotally about someone who you saw, you know, go from a, a young freshman who, you know, needed a, a little handholding once in a while, which everybody does to someone who by senior year, um, they were crushing it. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 won't, I won't use names, but you know, I think uh, there, there, there are many, um, but, I, but there's one in particular that not often, well, sometimes, but not often do I get to teach a student in composition one in the first year, but then also I, I get them in analytical writing. That doesn't always work because obviously the, for the sections, but, for me personally to see the growth that, you know, when, when I was doing the writing tests early in September in composition one and, and, and reading comp, I taught a little bit of reading comp and seeing that paragraph, I, I think I remember walking into Roberta's office and, and, and I, I don't think I could do this. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know where to start. Um, but then, you know, obviously through the whole process and, and the repetition and the, and the constant practice and the work, the development in comp one was, was, was great. Um, not obviously not ideal for where he wanted to be. He put a tremendous pressure on himself um, and, and would often get frustrated with himself. But then it, coming, I remember coming him coming back sophomore year and talking about, Oh, he, his, he got Kurzweil, which is a software program that we were using. Um, at the time he, you know, unprompted got it over the summer and used it, you know, for one of his summer reading books. And it found, it, it, he was, he was like, this is incredible. I can't believe I've, I've been missing this all my life. Like, you know, go back to the epiphany. And then I had him in anal analytical writing that year and it, it, watching the, watching the progress, um, you know, obviously personally, selfishly for me, um, it was super rewarding. Um, and I, and I, and I remember, parents weekend of his sophomore year, I pulled out his writing sample from, from comp one and I showed his parents. And I, at that time I showed him the first essay that he wrote for me in analytical writing. And, you know, while there was still some, some minor grammatical errors and punctuation and organizational um, issues, it overall, what, what he was able to produce in just, you know, a, a year, um, you know, or 13 or 14 months was incredible. And then, um, Mr. Mead actually was, was able to share me, um, obviously he graduated from the lead program, um, as a sophomore and continued to drop by and, and, and always pop in junior and senior year. But then Mr. Mead shared with me and his college essay. Um, and I, you know, I, I, a little emotional, you know, at night and day. Um, and I don't think, you know, I'm not trying to say that it was because of his te my teaching, but Come on, sure uh, was. you know, yes, it was. Um, yes, it was. I was waiting for the head nod for <laughs> everybody else. Um, but I just think it's, I, I think it's a student that bought into um, not just what I was asking him to do, but what the school was asking him to do. Um, it, it was a student that graduated from the lead program, but continued. I, I know that's a question that comes up quite a bit. Like what happens when my student graduates after the two years and he still has, you know, a year or two or three years for Jackson, right. At Trinity Pauling after that. So it constantly we pop in and can you look at this? Here's my English four essay. Here's my, you know, history essay for Mr. Mr. Taylor. Can you read it? And watching him make notes in the doc, the Google doc of, of things that I talked to him about three years ago or four years, you know, two years ago at that time, but 
like he was using the same language and the same verbiage that I had in my notes that, that I shared with him. Um, just watching a student like that, that bought into all sorts of the technology and made sure that, you know, he was doing everything he can to be successful and learning was very hard for him. And he graduated, you know, as a prefect, as a, on the headmaster's list for probably his entire time here, I would think, um, and has gone on to a successful school and continues to text, you know, weekly and update weekly. And it's, it's obviously why we do this job. Um, Sounds like a proud parent. But I, 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 yeah, I yeah, know. But feel, like, feel like you become their parents. Um, our and, same student that's at Richmond, Chris? Yes. So he And he recently wrote this incredible, and, and not to get off, to, but he wrote this incredible article um, in which he sent to my husband. And my husband said he, he had never seen a, a writing piece like this. He couldn't tell if he had written for the New York Times or... And, and said, you know, when he knew this individual as a freshman, he could barely write to this incredible sports article that he, we were we were beaming about. And, and again, like Chris, like you said to Chris, you know, the beaming parent. I mean, we were proud of, of the writer that he had become and, 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 and seeing the evolution of it has been incredible. I want to add to that, JP, is that you just saw the heart of of my team right there is and sometimes you hear the heart coming down the hallway when something amazing or they're accomplishing something we are extremely vocal we celebrate much like their parents sometimes beyond what their parents would celebrate but it's watching that evolution watching them to start to just lean into a little bit of confidence and I'm not talking just kids that are in our program, but I, we get to see that across the board, whether it's on the athletic field, um, in the dorms, you know, um, participating in a club, um, winter projects, things like that, that all of a sudden where they just are willing to just take a risk where they probably were not comfortable and, and actually take the advice of a really great teacher like um, Mr. Gilman and Mrs. Kellogg, you know, and say, all right, I'm going to try your method. I'm going to try the formula of how to write a good paragraph or write a good essay. I'm going to consistently follow the planner or our strategy for time sensitivity or, or any of those components. It's just the leaning in. And that's the hardest part about supporting a student is getting them to to trust us and to feel comfortable enough and to feel a connection that they hit a stride and build their confidence. And then it's like a snowball rolling down the hill. Yeah. And in the last couple of minutes, I'm, I'm going to ask kind of everybody. And uh, unfortunately, Harry is going to have to be the first one to answer it. So he, he's going to speak eloquently about this. But, you know, Harry, when you think about you've got now couple more years. And when you, I mean, I, I know you're coming back in a couple of days for the spring, which as a lacrosse player, that's, you know, now know, you know, knowing what happened last spring and, and what you're excited about, but not just lacrosse, but what excites you about the next couple of years of your life at Trinity Pauling? Well, I'll, um make this out quick and short <laughs> one obviously this is I, I don't mean to put athletics over academics but one I mean not having a lacrosse season last year and coming back and realizing and this is also my first time having a spring term at Trinity Poly I didn't have one last year so coming and just coming to the realization and knowing that I get to go to practice every day and be with my boys and teammates every single day is one great thing that I get to look forward to um two is just not to who toot or whatever the two my own horn is that what it is yes yep. just to hopefully and if i continue the way i am continuously see my growth as the example of what mr gilman said to that student um he it's it's i just want to continuously grow and hopefully actually get into some challenges that i can and obstacles that i can get over and as my mom say become a christian gentleman nice and Jackson, again, first year, um, 
lot of time to go. Um, and you know, you're not going to have, you know, six years like Mr. Gilman, but five is, is a good amount. Um, what are you most excited about, about the, this, the future you, you have with Trinity Pauling? I'm excited to see what I could become in the next few years academically and with sports because as I feel like my teachers know I'm not the best writer so I want to improve on that and see where that takes me and sports. Yeah and I know it, it, sports for you this year has not been everything that you well no one has um, but uh, I'm sure this spring should be great for you and and uh, it's going to be great for everybody to be outside and and, and back at it. So um, my distinguished faculty here, we've got a lot of years. Um, what excites you, Mrs. Kellogg, about the future of Trinity Pauling? There's lots of things. Um, I would say working with the people that I, that I work with every single day gets better every day. Um, it, it, it I love coming to work. And I, and I love working with the people that I'm, that I'm working with. And I love working with the students that I'm working with. I love the direction that we, that we go in every year. And, and to piggyback on what the boy said, I love watching the evolution of our students to see, you know, where some of them, the hot messes that they may be their freshman year to the gentlemen that they become in whatever way it is for them by their senior year. And then continuing with those relationships further on in life. I mean, 26 years, I, I taught Mr. Gilman. So, you know, I, I get to continue to have relationships with, with, with my working colleagues now that, that I've taught over the years. And I'm excited about that every single year. I'm excited about the newness. I'm excited about the changes that we make. So you know, again, I'm, I, I love working with these guys, all of them, all of you. Mr. Gilman. Harry, she told me that I was the best student. So sorry. I know you second. Um, I, I just think the, the challenges that everyone's willing to kind of hurdle and, and to kind of echo what everyone is saying is both faculty and students, their ability to lean in and try new things and continue to kind of push the boundaries a little bit. Um, obviously we're in a changing world for, for many reasons, but the, the continued growth, um, of, of both faculty and students to, to be able to hit that head on, um, and the students to try new things and, and ask them to, you know, when I ask them to spend, you know, a couple of days outside in the spring, you know, at the pond, as we're reading a book, like the, the, the ability that they're just put on their boots and show up to the pond that day. And, um, that's, I think that's a great thing. And, but the faculty as well, that we're, we're continuing to learn, um, and try new things, obviously. And, and, uh, we can continually, we can also get better and, and grow, um, as well. So I just think the continued pass of path of, of, uh, progression. Yeah, absolutely. Ms. Lito. Um, well, I'm excited because I think that the pandemic has taught a lot of a lot of lessons, um, and I think um, I ha have been amazed by um, our resilience and our willingness to get uncomfortable with the uncomfortable, or get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Sorry, <laughs> and um, and and just the constant st striving for excellence. Like, let's look at this again. Let's figure this out. Let's collaborate. Um, that really excites me. The team that we have here, um, the willingness for change for the for the for the benefit of the students, and um, how we do it best for them is really what matters. So um, for me, that's what matters. So I'm excited. Well, and and you know, being a part of a school like this since 1991, um, I think we we all talked about progress, and we all talk about individually getting better. Um, but as a, as a school, every day we, we try, we strive to be better at what we do. And that's in every aspect of school life. That's on the athletic fields, in the dormitories, in the classroom, everywhere. And I think that's something that is for the, again, for the folks that are on this call, for the boys potentially joining us in September, just know that 
you know, your, the opportunity to succeed, the opportunity to grow, the opportunity to be better, um, there's an excellent chance of doing that here. Um, because you have a group of brothers that will be there for life. Um, and they are going to help you every day, not just your teachers, not just your dorm parents, but your brothers that live down the hall, your brothers on the field. And I think that's an important aspect. No matter how strong you are in the classroom, you could be at seven APs, you could have 15 by the time you graduate, or you could be like me, who AP music theory, that was my lone AP class, which Harry, you're right there with me, buddy. I'm sure there's going to be more, but um, you can be whatever you want to be and, and, and have the strength to do it with the support of everyone around you. So um, there's my soapbox for 755 uh, on a Wednesday night. Um, but again, first of all, thank you to my, my panelists, uh, Harry and Jackson. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in a couple days uh, to start this spring break, uh, to, to finish spring break and start the spring term. But um, as always, uh, again, congratulations to those of you who have been accepted. Uh, we truly, truly um, congratulate you. We look forward to seeing you in September. And uh, please stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, enjoy the warm weather. Uh, have a great night, everyone. Thank you.